second in the Big 12 behind Texas. Well, guess who was picked to finish third? That would be Kansas State. And Aaliyah Carter, the Big 12 Freshman of the Year last year, she had a double-double, but she needs some help tonight. She does. There's no talent. There's no question. This is a talented, young, physical player, but she's taking a high volume of swings. She took 41 yesterday. And for her to be able to maintain a high efficiency, she's going to have to have some help. Could that come from the right side, from Warner, or from the left side, from Nimhart? I know they'd like to get their middles going, but they've got to find some compliments to Aaliyah Carter here today. Second Big 12 match for both of these programs. Can K-State even it up? Baylor has won the last seven matches against the Wildcats. Lauren Hinkle will start off serving. And there's Avery Skinner on the outside. Swing is long and there's no touch called. Haley Warner, the transfer from Florida, a little too much. Haley Warner is key for K-State because she does have the arm to provide the complimentary offense that they need, and it also allows them to spread the net because she's going to be swinging from the right pin. They'll go to the outside, and Aaliyah Carter gets the first kill for K-State. That's not a surprise. Not at all. 14 kills just yesterday, as we mentioned, but hitting below 150. And the problem with their offense yesterday is that she took 41 swings. So that's what we're talking about when we say they need to diversify that offense, take a little load off of her. Sedwick goes outside to Avery Skinner. And what a player, what a pickup for Baylor. Wanted to finish out her graduate degree, and Baylor had the program. A huge pickup for Ryan McGuire and the Bears. They try in the middle. This time they'll try on the outside with Carter. And Aaliyah Carter, another kill. And that's Fernholz in the middle there wearing four for K-State. And even though that doesn't create a kill, it's still a key piece of the offense to establish the middle early and force that Baylor block to respect the middle attack. That's only going to open things up on the outside. Playing to 25 in this first set. You have to win by two. Sedgwick will go to the middle as well. Kara McGee gets the start today. Did not start yesterday. She's coming off of illness. Not COVID related. There's Yasiana Presley. She's blocked. Tayana Adams Katanohi was there. How about that for a setter? Really nice job here of staying inside as they set that ball really in the gap between the outside and the middle. And Adams Katanohi gets over there to help out in the middle. It's a big time block, especially against a former national player of the year. Presley takes another swing and a miss hit. Obviously very out of system. And we mentioned earlier that Presley now swinging primarily from the right side. In serve receive, they do have that option, though, to use her on the left pin. And you wonder if she's had fewer reps out there as she's tried to make that transition to the right side and how that could impact her. Well, that service error will end a three-point run for K-State. Obviously not happy with the error, but in order to counter the physicality of Baylor, K-State is going to have to serve tough today. And we may see a few errors along with that. They've got to try to get this big physical offense out of system. Well, Susie Fritz told us their service pressure is one of their top three strengths as they find the connection and drop it on the floor. I think it was, was it Aaliyah Carter again? It was Aaliyah Carter with the tip shot. So I like the fact that she's, mix not only is she mixing her shots up, but the setter, of course, doing everything she can to mix up the offense as well. We've already seen attacks from the right pin and the middle. Oh, Anna Sedwick was there to clean that up off the net. Big attack from Presley. Jaden Nimhard, the other outside for K-State. Kara McGee in the middle, does get the touch. And interesting, you can see that both these teams are making a concerted effort to involve their middles early. Definitely a big part of the game plan. Kara McGee really known for her blocking, but several swings there in that trip across the front row. So both teams trying to establish the middle early. Well, Baylor only got four kills out of both of their middles combined. Andressa Parise got the start at middle yesterday, did not have any kills. Presley Anderson had all four from the middle. And there's Anderson. 
Coach McGuire told us it's really not about the number of swings we get from the middle as much as it is about the efficiency. We love to see them up over 300. We're not going to force the middle if it's not there, and why would you? Baylor is maybe the only team in the country that has a luxury of three All-American pin players, so they can rely on those pins. And Jaden Nimhard breaks through the net. She had a breakout game last year against West Virginia. They were down a player due to injury, and she just stepped up, came out of nowhere, and had a career high at West Virginia. I think you saw the glimpses of brilliance from her a year ago, and this year she's just a more mature player and doing it more consistently. Yeah, member of the Big 12 all-rookie team last season. Yasiana Presley will connect right down the right side and if you don't understand the difference between the left pin and the right pin for a right-handed player in particular it can be very difficult to learn to receive a ball at the right pin where the ball has to travel across your body before you take a swing at it so a big adjustment that Yasiana Presley has been willing to make and I love the fact that coach McGuire said we're only going to be as good as we're willing to sacrifice so everyone making small adjustments on this team for the good of the entire team yeah, and he told us, too, that Avery Skinner and Lauren Harrison have got to be so good out of system on that left pin in order for Yasiana Presley to stay on the right because she takes a, she took a lot of junk playing on the left. Mm -hmm. How about that out of the back? One of the things about Yasi swinging on the right side, though, is that they're using her more out of the back row. We see her down the middle that time from right back. She can do it all. Tough serve, too. Bram Schreiber got that back up, and there's a block. Kananohi, I believe, again. That time alongside Bolding there for K-State. And it was Baylor who said yesterday, Coach McGuire said the one area of their game that he wasn't thrilled about was their blocking game. He wanted to get it going earlier today, but right now it's K-State and Coach Fritz who have the blocking game going early here. Baylor outblocked K-State yesterday 4-2. to two. Looking for a touch, won't get it. Yeah, Ryan McGuire, I mean, what a tough situation he's in, right? Um, having three All-Americans, Susie Fritz is the head coach of Kansas State in her 21st season, a veteran. She loves the team that she has this year. Started three freshmen last year, and now they're experienced players. The jump you can make from your freshman to sophomore year, this K-State team is going to benefit from the experience those four freshmen had a year ago. Yeah, and one of those was Jaden Nimhard. Gets the kill off the touch. Absolutely great job swinging high hands. Yeah, so there's Ryan McGuire in his seventh season at Baylor. Got them to the national semifinals back in 2019. That's when Yasiana Presley was named the national player of the year. And a service error for K-State. Hinkle goes along there, and she's really one of their best servers, honestly, in terms of the numbers that she's able to put up. And so I'm not surprised to see her be aggressive because Coach Fritz really likes her defensive specialists, and she says all of them are very good servers. And I would think one of their big jobs today would be to create pressure from the service line. In the middle, Sydney Bolding. Bolding doing a really nice job there. She's a more offensive look for them at the M2 spot. She was out early in the season with an injury, so hasn't played in a ton of sets, but you can see that even as an M2, she can provide them with some offense. Sometimes Avery Skinner just makes it look so easy. But what we alluded to in the open is the connection that she's developing with setter Hannah Sedwick. Realize Avery just transferred in this year. And so this is a young connection. They have not played a lot of volleyball together. And wow, from weekend one of the season to where they are right now, you can see how far they've come, how comfortable they're playing together, making changes and transition and just knowing where they are on the floor. It's really, it's really been fun to watch them develop. And they're both veteran players, so that's got to help big time, too. Baylor's got their largest lead right now here in the opening set. Alia Carter trying to throw off this Baylor defense. Skinner almost blocked. Katie Fernholz connecting for the kill. 
Again, another choice for K-State that's not outside, trying to be a little more creative offensively. They choose to go to the middle, and Fernholz is able to use that block. But K-State, early in the rally, had a block of their own to slow down this Baylor offense. It's a tough thing to do. Baylor comes in hitting 263. That's fourth in the Big 12, but they have so many weapons. I mean, it really makes your defense think. Ooh. Heavy arm from Alita Carter. There is Aaliyah Carter, and make it four kills now on seven attempts without a single error. I think they're setting her so wisely today, and it, hopefully that's going to help her keep that efficiency up. Yasiana Presley can do it too. So much being asked of Presley this year as she is swinging from that right side, making those adjustments, being asked to to swing out of the back row in a really consistent fashion. In fact, she's almost their middle offense at times out of the back row, the way they run her right down the middle of the court. So a lot of big changes, and I, I just love to see elite players willing to do whatever it takes to make their team the best. Yeah, defense is always watching number 22 in gold because, she, as you said, she will be anywhere on the floor, and they will set her. That ball did drop point for K-State. <laughs> Lauren Harrison. And you know, Courtney, night two can be so much about adjustments. As you see Lauren Harrison there at first team selection for all Big 12 a season ago. But night two, when you have a back-to-back -back double header like this, can be so much about adjustments. And with three solid pin attackers, watch out for Lauren Harrison. She didn't have the big numbers last night, but she certainly has the ability to come through for Baylor. And Ryan McGuire told us their goal is to get better on night two. The Big 12 played these back-to-backs last year, and that's something they focused on. Lauren Harrison, another swing, another kill. Baylor, the first to 15 here in set one. the national championship earlier this spring. Texas and Kentucky went head to head. Now an SEC team had never won a national championship in volleyball. Well, until this spring, Kentucky, Craig Skinner and his Wildcats got the job done. And a member of that team was Avery Skinner, the All-American since then. She has transferred to Baylor as a grad transfer, finishing out her graduate degree, and a huge get just to throw in an All-American to your mix of right. an already solid Baylor team. Yeah, Coach McGuire told me earlier in the year, he said it's not many days that you get a call like that from Coach Skinner saying, hey, I have a player who's interested in a graduate degree that your school offers, and it just happens to be All-American Avery Skinner. That's a good phone call, let me tell you. Yeah, four-time SEC champion, a national champion, a first-team All-American. And, and Ryan McGuire told us the first thing that stuck out is her cheerful joy when she is on the court. She's like a kid. She loves to get out there and play. And it's got to yeah, be just, fun to play with this roster, too. Absolutely. But, you know, we when we talked about her, you, you got to think that as a coach, you know, what stands out to you? You're thinking the power, you know, the ball control, the all-around player. And I just love the fact he said her cheerful joy, you know, and her maturity. Yep. Wow. She led them last night against K-State with 17 kills, hit 467 on the pin. Jaden Nimhard through the block. She's had some nice swings early on. Anderson not quite able to close there to the outside for Baylor because of the speed of the offense. And that is one way to beat a big physical team is go faster. And so when K-State is in system, look, to them, look for them to get the ball to the outside as quick as they can. Well, that was close, but they call it out. Again, seeing some aggressive serving from K-State. And while I know it can be frustrating with a lot of missed serves, in order to really compete against a team like Baylor, I think they have to be aggressive from the service line, particularly in their own gym. It was surprising, Missy, to see last night. K-State did not have a service ace for the first time since November of 2014. Right. Point Baylor. 
And Courtney, to your point, I don't think that necessarily means that K-State is not a strong serving team because coach told right. us that's actually one of their strengths. I think what that speaks to is the fact that this Baylor team is coming together as a unit. They're getting used to passing next to the person that they're standing next to. Early in the season, the question was, who, who are we going to play? Now it's not who, it's what. And they're able to start to develop their team even further. They figured out a lineup, and now they're shoring up some of those passing scenes, some of those transitions defensively. Defensively, and, and this is a team that's going to be scary in December. Yeah, Baylor gets a kill from Yasiana Presley in the back row. 19-14 Baylor as Kansas State calls timeout. And Missy, you were a setter. To have this many weapons, what is it like to adjust and figure out where you need to go win if you're Hannah Sedwick, the setter for Baylor? You know, I think it's really important that Hannah Sedwick is so mature that she's in her fifth season because I think there would be a tendency for a young setter to feel a pressure that every night your three All-Americans have to have an equal number of kills. And she has handled this team so well. They understand matchups. They understand that it's about the hot hand. And then it can be a different leader each night, but I think only a mature setter can really understand that role for this team. Well, our week three Monday night football matchup is a big early season NFC East showdown. Jalen Hurts and the one and one Eagles are in the Lone Star State to take on Dak Prescott and the one and one Cowboys, eight Eastern, five Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, the ESPN app. ESPN two is going to have Monday night football with Peyton and Eli. If you haven't checked that out, it is just phenomenal. Our coverage begins with Monday night countdown, six Eastern, three Pacific. Susie Fritz and her K-State team down 19-14 in the first set. Courtney Lyle, Missy Whittemore with you. Baylor swept Kansas State last night. They're playing back-to-back -back matches just like they did last year in Big 12 play. It helps cut down on travel, exposure, all those things. Just a little bit safer. Still with COVID, very much a real issue. And Coach Fritz told us, really, when we play Baylor, the focus is on us, not on them. She knows this is a young team. She said, you know, it's small adjustments in many areas, not one big thing that's going to allow us to win this match. But you have to think with such a young team, the back-to-back -back is difficult for this group. I, as a coach, I would probably love to have a chance to play Baylor early in Big 12 play and then maybe give my team a chance to grow a little and see how we measured up against them later in the season. But that's a luxury they won't have. They, they've got them on back-to-back -back days, and so it's an opportunity for this team to see what kind of adjustments can we make literally in 24 hours. Now, Baylor is on a 4-0 run right now. They're hitting 417 in this set. Arsenio serves. They'll go to the right side. Off of the block and a point, Haley Warner. And for Warner, that is actually going to be her first kill on the day. So a slow start for Warner, but they finally get her going offensively. Now she had eight kills yesterday, but those eight errors put her at a, excuse me, put her at a zero hitting percentage in the first round against Baylor. Warner again, blocked. Wow, you get them where you want them. If you're K-State, you got to think we finally got a quality serve, created an out-of-system look for Baylor. They send a free ball over, and what do they do? They step up with an elite-level defensive play, a stuff block point for Baylor. Presley Anderson and Avery Skinner at the net on that one. Folding. Not one of the usual suspects offensively for K-State. I like the setting selection. Mix it up. Show Baylor something a little different. One of the small adjustments from yesterday. That's her second kill. She had three kills yesterday. We're just in the first set. So smart by Hannah Sedwick. That was really tight. Hannah Sedwick, an All-American setter in 2019. She's six foot one. Not only does she deliver a really good ball, but she's so good up at the net with her height and her physicality. She struggled with injury a season ago, and so they split that setting role, and she's set along the front row, but not along the back row because of limited movement. And this team is really starting to find a rhythm again in the 5-1. Straight to the floor goes Aaliyah Carter. Six kills for Aaliyah Carter, hitting over 600. Couldn't ask for a better response from this sophomore to have to come back again today against this big Baylor team. 
And she's had double figure, double figure kills in every match this season for the Wildcats. Well, that was a nice dig by Hinkle. Free ball back to K-State. And the dump by Teana Adams Katanohi works. And it was another solid serve from K-State. It created a little bit of an out-of-system look for Baylor from the get-go. And it took a while, but it allowed K-State to get ahead in that point. They never let Baylor have one of their big, heavy swings. Presley. Carter. Off the block. Blasts one off the block of McGee, and that's McGee up there at the net for Baylor, one of the best blockers in the Big 12 and in the nation, really. So that's no small order. Three straight points for K-State. Presley will come into the court and get it. Seven kills now for Yasiana. Yasiana Presley comes at you from a different angle. Her, abil her leaping ability, she's so high, she hits over the block. And as a defender, it's literally coming at you from an angle that you might not see in your own gym on a day-to-day -day basis. And it just takes a while to get used to that, uh, to that look. Katie Fernholtz off of one foot for K-State. Really have to like the production we're getting out of K-State Middles here in this first set. And it is so important to open up the pins. So the K-State Middles really doing their job early in this one. Yeah, they are glad to have her back. She missed last weekend with a lower leg injury. They'll try her again and it works. There she is again, flying behind the setter. That slide play, so effective. Yeah, you know, Susie Fritz told us Katie Fernholt is, is the great, the perfect M1. And the M1 is going to be up at the net with the setter for two rotations. So there's only two attackers up there. So she's got to be able to have that versatility to come off of one foot. And K-State entered this Baylor series on an eight-match winning streak. Of course, they were swept yesterday by the Bears. But... They started one and two and then went on that run. I, I think it helps too. You've got a veteran setter. You've got some pieces that got experience last season. And the team mantra, it's built different. And Susie Fritz feels like this team is. Yeah, this is a team with losses only to Nebraska and Pepperdine. You see there, those are big time opponents. And coach said, even those losses, we would like to have those matches back. We feel like those are teams that we can compete with. And then, you know, she talked about it. We talked about it earlier, the fact that when they focus on their side of the net, she said, I feel like we can compete with anyone. We just have to take care of our side of the net. This is still a very young team. Well, we want to remind you, Big 12 Now on ESPN Plus is a must-have for Big 12 fans. There's over 150 soccer and volleyball matches, plus basketball season. It's less than seven weeks away. Big 12 Media Days will give you a season preview. Women tip things off from the T-Mobile Center in Kansas City on Tuesday, October 19, with the men following that night. You can sign up today, ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 Now. It's a really good sign for K-State, Courtney, and, and that they're making a push late because in the match, in the sets yesterday, when the teams got to 20, Baylor was really able to separate themselves in those final five points. And so K-State really needs to make a push from 20 on. And so this is a really good sign for them here. Kara McGee, though, is going to give Baylor set point. Great job by the setters on both sides of the net, consistently sticking with their game plan, which obviously had to do with establishing the middle early on both sides of the net. And you know, you can go away from that late in a set, but look at Hannah Sedwick right there, finding her middle. Callie Williams to serve. Fernholtz, they don't have an answer for that right now. Wow, we talk about we talked about uh, Hannah Sedwick finding her middle. Well, it's a pretty gutsy set there on set point for Adams Kananohe to go ahead and set not only her middle, but on the slide behind. It's a blind set. It can be a little scary. 
Sedwick will go to Lauren Harrison, and the opening set goes to Baylor 25 to 22. Baylor comes out and gets the win in the opening frame. They hit 438. The level Baylor is playing at right now. Yeah, they Kansas State had 22 errors in the match yesterday. They hit 150. Important to note, too, their star, Aaliyah Carter, she also had seven kills, just like Yasiana Presley. No attacking errors. So hitting 636, that really helps that team hitting percentage. Fern holes for K-State hitting at 625 out of the middle and Bolding also hitting above 600 at 667. So the middle's really pulling their weight. And it's not necessarily about high quantity for those two. It's about quality. And they are certainly giving quality swings. It's hard to complain about those numbers. Avery Skinner. And when we talk about swinging at the left pin, there are so many different looks for Avery. Sometimes the ball is wide to the pin. Sometimes it's more of a gap set. It can be low. It can be high. And so that's why that adjustment period between her and Hannah Sedwick is so important for them to get into a flow. And wow, they've really established that flow. Aaliyah Carter has figured out that block over there. That's her eighth kill now. Yeah, absolutely not shying away from that block of Baylor, just using it, blasting off those hands. She's got to be frustrating, those Baylor blockers. Yeah, she was a two-time state champion in volleyball in high school and also a state champ in the long jump. Look at her get up and get after that one. Here comes Skinner. Got to know he back to Carter, just a little too wide. And that's going to be her first error on the day for Aaliyah Carter. Already eight kills. Really off to a fantastic start. Had to reach back for that swing. Presley's in the back row, so she couldn't attack that. Fernholds, what a weapon in the middle. And this is a great job by K-State taking advantage of a free ball opportunity, something they weren't able to do a couple times in set one. If you have Baylor sending a free ball over, that's a must-have point. And that's exactly what K-State does. Great job by their setter there to get the ball quickly to the middle before that Baylor defense can get set. Skinner tips over the block. Nobody there. And the reason no one's there is because Avery Skinner has been so good with the heavy arm from the left side. So she creates this hole in the middle of the court for herself with the quality swings that she's already taken in this match. She's got those defenders thinking about defending the big swing and she just drops one into the center of the court. And there is an ace for oh. Hannah Sedwick. That's the second ace for Baylor. Outside to Carter. Big block, no problem for Aaliyah Carter. And how about Kahanohi there, Adams Kahanohi, the setter for K-State. That ball was well off the net. She had to travel out to the three-meter line. It was a high, slow pass. And then all of a sudden, she just changes the tempo of the offense with a really quick push to the left pin. Really nice job by her speeding up the offense. Yasiana Presley will connect. <laughs> And I'm not sure that words can do that justice. That is a special swing. Enjoy. Take a look again for your viewing pleasure. It cannot be fun to try to dig Yasiana Presley. No. Fernholtz off of one foot did not get the touch. Yeah, Yasiana is such an impressive volleyball player. And these pictures, I mean, look how high she is up in the air yeah the wow. net by the way is seven feet about four inches high just for reference yeah and and that's her chest well up above the net Jaden Nimhard with the quick thinking <laughs> Four, 
Nimhard there, another one of those sophomores who started last year as a freshman. You can take some ups and downs when you start that many freshmen, but the experience they gain can never be replaced. When they're third and fourth year players, the experience that they will bring to the court is just going to be, it's going to be really good news for this K-State volleyball team down the road. Yeah, she's been battling with Holly Bonday for that other outside hitter spot. Adams Katanogi. Adams kind of know he is really coming into her own now as a junior, just controlling the offense of this team. I love what Coach Fritz said to us about in your first two years as a player, you spend a lot of time thinking about what I need to do. And then in your second two years, if we're developing you correctly, you can now start to think about what do we need to do. You can expend your energy differently. And I feel like as a setter, that is so important to reach that point in your game. Yeah, Susie Fritz told us that Tayana Adams, Katanohi, they gave them all of June off just to regroup from the spring season. She came back the most prepared and ready to go, was holding her teammates accountable. It was a big change. As a coach, you got to be thrilled when it's your setter who's the most prepared and ready to go. Such an important position. There she goes again. Great timing there, being aware of the block. Just one block opposite her. Kind of lulled that block to sleep over the course of the match. And then just tips right around it. She has three kills at the setter position. Service error. And while I like the fact that K-State's trying to create pressure, so many balls falling just out of bounds near the lines, you have to really appreciate Baylor's, the way they are following the ball to the line, the way they are communicating, making smart choices, not playing balls that are out of bounds. Lauren Harrison with the stuff. So many weapons offensively for Baylor, but this team takes a lot of pride in their defense. I think sometimes people forget how hard it is to score points against Baylor when you have a Lauren Harrison who's known for her offense and yet such a solid left side blocker as well. Yeah, opponents against Baylor are hitting 180. That's not a great number. Right. Out of the back row goes Carter, stuffed. Nimhart's turn. And there's going to be a net violation on Kansas State. But Courtney, even in that rally, the fireworks are the big swing by Yasiana Presley, and yet it was a beautiful transition dig out of middle back by Avery Skinner. And that's what we're talking about. The defense this team plays is sometimes lost in the brilliance of their offense. And they're challenging this play. They called Kansas State in the net. So I'm assuming that Susie Fritz is the one pulling the challenge card. And they'll take a look to see if there was a player in the net. Because I also think the ball bounces off the top of the net. Well. Oh, yep, there's a hand yeah, right it does there. Look like a hand. And in real time, I thought the ball hit the net tape. And so maybe K-State was hoping that the net bouncing there was from the ball hitting the net tape and not necessarily from their blocker. So remember, in conference play, they're using an experimental rule in the Big 12 is one of the conferences doing it. You get two challenges and you get to keep those challenges until you're wrong. If we go to a fifth set, each team will get an extra challenge, but you won't have more than two challenges. This is different than in the past when you get three challenges and no matter what the decision is, you lose that challenge. So I really like this new rule that they're experimenting and I hope we Im implement it full time soon. Oh, I'm a huge fan of this rule. Last year, it was frustrating at times to see coaches use their challenges and be correct over and over and over and yet get into a set four and not have any challenges available to them anymore in that match. So this this will eliminate that. I just am so excited about this experimental system. And so there was a player in the net for Kansas State, as you saw. Baylor will get to keep that point. Nimhart swinging on the right pin in this rotation. Out of the 
the back row comes Skinner and rejected. Bolding in the middle. And you'll notice for K-State there, that was Nimhart swinging from the right side because they also have Vonday in the match now. For the first time today, she's wearing 15. You see her there for K-State. And they had her stay at the left pin. Nimhart was at the right pin. We may see an adjustment now where they may send Vonday to the right pin and Nimhart to the left. Looks like that's what they'll do. Actually, Aaliyah Carter has rotated to the front row. Yeah, and Holly Bonde, she played on that right pin last year. She can kind of go back and forth between the left and right. Yeah, Bonde is such a unique talent for this team because she can really play all positions. You see her right there helping out block in the middle. So she's going to be a key piece of their success. Coach Fritz said, we're going to need all of our pin hitters over the course of the Big 12 season to be successful. They will set Carter. Presley hustles after it. Free ball back to the Wildcats. That ball was touched. Kill for Aaliyah Carter. Make it number 10. And there's a block waiting on her. She still has to battle that Baylor block, even in that free ball situation. But such a smart swing. She's not going hard and low. She is going high and hard. Dump by Hannah Sedwick. Wow, you start to feel like you have a little, you know, wind in your sail as Hannah Sedwick throws one to the floor. Quick point for Baylor. <laughs> Chanel Bramshriver, of course, the first Big 12 Libra of the Year ever for Baylor University. And we've talked a lot about the offense of this team, but she is pretty good defensively as well. Nasty serve there, gets the ace for Baylor. That's their third ace of the match, and they're enjoying their largest lead here. It's fun to watch Aaliyah Carter just rip a ball. And this particular sequence of uh, contacts makes me laugh because Coach Fritz said one of the odd things about our group is that we're actually pretty good when things are bad. She said it's an interesting thing about this group, and you saw right there, not a good first contact, a crazy bump set on contact two, and Aaliyah Carter just rips at one of her prettiest swings of the night. So that's got to be a positive for any coach. When you have a group who plays well at a system, that is not normally the case. Yeah, she said that was one of their top three strengths. <laughs> Kara McGee gets the kill for Baylor. They're up 15 to nine in set two. We'll have a WNBA playoff doubleheader for you Tuesday with a pair of game ones in the best of five semifinals. MVP John Paul Jones and the top seeded Sun play at eight Eastern. Opponents still to be determined. Then we'll see Asia Wilson and the second seeded Aces make their playoff debut. Both games on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. We can tell you the Mercury defeated the Storm in overtime earlier today. The Sky and the Lynx still in action right now. The Sky up by seven. So keeping an eye on those WNBA scores in the playoffs. Keeping an eye on Aaliyah Carter, too, because she is just so dangerous. And to think that this is just her second season playing college volleyball. And Courtney, you'll see a lot of young players come out and kind of have a breakout year as a freshman. I mean, she was the Big 12 Freshman of the Year. But to repeat that in your sophomore year, when all of a sudden your name is highlighted on every scouting report, when you are carrying the majority of the sets for your team, I am so impressed with Aaliyah Carter. Yeah, she comes into this match averaging just over four kills per set. Talking about Aaliyah Carter, already at 12 kills tonight. She had 14 yesterday. We're just in the second set. Baylor's figured out how to stop Fernholtz on the slide. Back row for Carter. Free ball opportunity for K-State. And there was a net violation on Baylor. And they're able to convert it. I'll tell you what, the, the way that Nimhart came flying in there on the attack, I think really drew that block into the net. I like how she gets well off the net and then uses her speed and her length, you know, to her benefit with a really big approach. Yeah, Susie Fritz told us she is one of the smoothest, more fluid outside hitters that they have. You can see why. It's got to feel good to block Yasiana Presley. It just does. I'm sorry. It must feel great. 
Yeah, when you're big and high and swinging hard, it comes back at you even quicker. So it's hard to cover a big swing like that from Yasi Presley. That was Sydney Bolding in on the stop. Lauren Harrison coming out of the middle. And one of the things that I've really liked as I've watched Baylor over the last couple of matches is how they're being creative in the way that they're getting swings out of the middle. That it's not always coming from their middle blocker. That their middle blockers are primarily blockers. They're going to get some swings out of them, but maybe not a high number. So you'll see them bring an outside hitter down the middle to keep that blocker home. You'll see Yossi Presley swing out of the back row down the middle. They've been really creative in ways to create a middle blocker attack or a middle attack, even if it's coming from a pin player. So I really like how they're being creative in their offense. And I'm not surprised, Missy, that it took them a few matches to figure that out and to get that on rhythm. That's very intricate. Oh, absolutely. The timing of that, the traffic flow patterns, you know, trusting one another. Yeah, and, and, and they had to do all of that in some really tough matches. They scheduled so tough in their pre-conference schedule. And so they weren't going out and doing this against teams that they had the luxury of, you know, maybe giving away a few points. They're doing it against top-ranked teams across the nation, trying to figure out exactly the lineup they wanted to have on the floor. Holly Bonde inserted late into the match. Swing and a kill. And depth is going to be a strength of this K-State team over the course of Big 12 play. And in fact, Coach McGuire, it was one of the things that he was concerned about. He said they have several very different attackers, that they have depth, and that their attackers are all very different. And so being able to adjust to whoever's on the floor, and right now it's Bonday on the floor. Presley Anderson. A player now in her senior year, a transfer from Cal. And coach said, you know, in her second year in the program now, she's really starting to have a stronger voice and become a real leader for this group as well. Backside to Bondé with the off speed. Carter went right around a triple block. Absolutely. I was going to say, do you see the respect that Baylor is showing for the attack of Aaliyah Carter? Look at Avery Skinner. They know where it's going. She comes all the way over. They've got three up against Aaliyah Carter, and it won't matter. She only has two attacking errors tonight, 13 kills. Look at that hit percentage. Ooh, nice placement by Avery Skinner. Avery Skinner has such great high contact point that allows her to drive the ball deep into the court. And those balls to the deep corners are just so incredibly hard to defend. Baylor hitting 429 in this set, 434 for the match. Bondi on the right side, Bram Schreiber handles it beautifully. Another triple block, two triple blocks against Aaliyah Carter. Skinner, she will get the touch. And you wondered if it was going to create some issues in transition with Skinner going all the way over into right front to block. Would she be able to get back out to take a full swing at that ball? But she does a nice job managing that. K-State's going to call a time here, timeout here. Three straight points for Baylor. They need three more points to win set number two. Well, this is the first week of conference action for all these teams. Texas has not started conference play yet, but they will open up conference play on Thursday against West Virginia. They come into this season number one. They have not lost a match. I cannot wait to see Texas and Baylor, which has become a common theme every year, right? Like that's the match Absolutely. to watch. Absolutely. And it's good news for Baylor that Texas sits there at number one because with those opportunities in conference play to play the number one seeded team in the country, they can still work themselves into a top four team in this country and be a region Regional host at the end of the year, and that's the goal for Baylor right now. You take a look there, Iowa State, Kansas, both undefeated in league play right now. And the other team that joins them is West Virginia, off to a 2-0 start in league play. So Baylor trying to keep pace 
and end today at 2-0 like those other three teams. Baylor took the opening set 25-22. to They're up 22-15 to here in set number two. Well, Monday Night Football with Peyton and Eli, it's over on ESPN2 at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. They'll be breaking down the Eagles and Cowboys game from their couches with special attention paid to the QBs. Of course, Monday Night Football coverage also available on ESPN and the ESPN app. Eli just can't let it go that uh, Peyton's got a big head. It's two weeks in a row now. It's come up. Can't get the helmet on. What did he say last week? Got a five head. It's, it's good television. <laughs> I always learn something watching them. Baylor with a hefty lead in set two. Carter with a hefty swing, kill number 14 that matches her total from last night. And one of the things we're seeing from Aaliyah Carter that's so key for K-State is this is a first swing kill, meaning off of the pass, she kills the ball. They never give Baylor an opportunity to even play offense. And a lot of teams are really good on first swing kill and not good in transition. Interestingly, K-State, who has some oddities about them, said that our first swing offense actually needs to catch up with our transition offense. Our transition might be better. And so particularly against a team like Baylor, who's so good offensively, if you can get first swing kills and not give them that opportunity to play offense, that's what you're going for. And Aaliyah Carter, has been able to do that today. Tough service pressure results in a free ball back to Baylor. Here comes Skinner again. Carter blocked. Kara McGee and Yassiana Presley. It is set point Baylor. And with Presley now playing at the right side, one of her duties is primary blocking because you're going to be defending typically the opponent's best attacker. So she has to put a lot more time into her blocking. Bram Schreiber on the save. Sedwick setting from her knees. Advantage, K-State still set point, Baylor. Good job there by K-State, just owning the net. They had the upper hand in that rally and they kept the pressure on. Yeah. Presley out of the middle. Set two to Baylor, 25-17. Baylor still hitting over 400. K-State hitting 297 in the match. How can they rally here? Lauren Hinkle will start serving. Oh, I thought Avery Skinner got that in. And I originally thought there might have been a touch there. But hey, K-State will take it. Start with the lead in set three. Going at Brasenio and she hangs in there and puts up a quality pass. Here comes Carter. I tell you what, two blockers camped out waiting on her at this point. Not a lot of question where the ball is going. Can you stop her? And right now the answer has been no. That is her 29th swing of the match. Presley Anderson just had to tip that over and find success. Baylor with its first point. And it might not be the hard hitting ball, but it'll go down as a kill nonetheless in the box score. Haley Warner. Take two. Presley's dig goes over and out. Warner really has an elite arm. Coach Fritz said that is her identity. She has a big stick. It's that elite arm that she has. 
And with that and that left-handed swing, she has a wide cone of shots. She just has to make sure that she continues to move the ball around. You know, she has struggled tonight. That's just her first kill. She's hitting in the negative. Skinner goes after it. Good up by Hinkle. Oh, the extra hustle from Lauren Hinkle to get that ball up. Absolutely. Really nice defensive core of players for K-State that Coach Fritz was so confident in, whether it be Morris, Hinkle, Smith. Talked about their ability to, uh, to pass so well for this group, also dig balls well, and then, of course, they really rely on the serving of those three. Good connection for Sedwick and Skinner. Perfect pass. Look at that. Brasenio lays it right on top of the setter, and that allows them to stay in system with a really quick tempo. Try Warner. She tips it. Nobody back there. It's a really smart shot by Warner because they're asking their off blocker to travel all the way across the court and pick that shot up so their line blocker can stay back and dig that line shot of Haley Warner. So it's Presley who's being asked to come all the way over behind the block. That's a really tough get. Warner does rotate out, so only two attacking options in the front row for K-State. Free ball back to Baylor. Kara McGee in the middle. And when you've got a team on the scramble, if you can quickly set that middle blocker, it is so hard to defend because K-State was barely back in their defensive base positions. And already that ball is on top of them. Kara McGee, she was out for four days coming into this series with K-State with an illness, not COVID related, but only saw her in that third set last night. Had a kill and a block. She got the start tonight. Well, interestingly, Coach McGuire was saying that he didn't feel like they blocked as well as they had. He said it was not until late in the match that their block picked up. And I thought, well, I don't think it's a coincidence that Kara McGee was in an inserted late in that match. And that's when they saw their blocking pick up. Yeah, she is their blocks leader, averaging 1.4 blocks per set. Speaking of blocking, once again, it's Baylor putting up three against Aaliyah Carter, showing so much respect to the sophomore. At what point is she going to challenge those remaining three defenders with a little tip? Right now, she's winning the battle with her arm. Well, she just has that elite work ethic, especially in the weight room, Susie Fritz told us. So maybe that's paying off against a big block. I like that set to the right side to Yasiana Presley there because it was low and flat. So not only is she fast and high, really take advantage of her speed there by getting the ball to the right pin fast and allowing her to just go get it. Fernholtz is stopped off of one foot. They had a lot of success in the first set running that slide. And that was an adjustment made by Lauren Harrison. You watch this block set up from Lauren Harrison. She sets up in the angle. She is taking away that angle shot. Actually, no close there by Anderson. That is Harrison all alone. The transfer from North Carolina was an All-American last season. That was going to be tough for Jaden Nimhard. A little tight the set to the net there, and so Nimhard maybe hoping to grab some blockers' hands, but that one sails well wide. Baylor with its first lead thanks to three straight points. Off the serve of Callie Williams. There's some power, got it back going down the line. Absolutely, down the line. She adjusts her shot. So she says, if you're going to block angle, look what I can do. And now you have to have a good set to be able to do this. So credit Adams Kananohe for getting that ball all the way out to the pin. And Fernholz with a, with a really nice finish. Oh, Presley, kill number 13. And because she's swinging from the right pin, what they're able to do there is run a double quick. So this is something that Yasiana Presley would not have been asked to do a year ago at the left pin, but now at that right pin, she's running a double quick at times, coming in and taking the ball right off the setter's head behind. Oh. 
She came out and exploded with seven kills in the first set, just six since then. Carter tips out of the back row. They'll set up Harrison. Lauren Harrison. Harrison with the kill, but notice there in the middle of your court in 10, yellow number 10, Vandermark has been inserted into the lineup for Baylor. And when we talk about Baylor and adjustments, this is just one more adjustment that they've made. Look at Lauren Harrison off the net, no problem for her. But Vandermark was a right side player a year ago. She's left-handed and she's been in and out of the middle this year for them. So several players on this team being asked to sacrifice, make changes for the good of the whole and Vandermark. Uh, new to the middle has been a nice addition for them as well. Now, first time we have seen her did not play yesterday, but inserted here in set number three. Timeout called a six to one run for Baylor. They're up by three. Back here in set number three, second meeting between K-State and Baylor in the last two days. Courtney Lyle, Missy Whittemore with you. Baylor has been the hot team, but Kansas State definitely challenging them as there's an attacking error for Jaden Nimhard. And really the result of a, just a nice serve from Baylor because from the get-go, the serve there created all sorts of issues. And that's Yasiana Presley. When we talk about her, she is the complete player. We said to Coach McGuire, we just sometimes are so awed by her offense that we don't give enough credit to what she does from the service line, what she does defensively. She steps in there and digs a whole lot of balls for this team. I think she got Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week last year, and that was like the biggest thing. This is a National Player of the Year, and she was excited about the De Defensive Player of the Week award. Marika Vandermark came in late here in the third set in the middle. There's the kill. And talk about a challenge defending. This is such a different look. It's so rare to see a left-handed player out of the middle. And so what do they do? They run her behind. That is so unique and creative. That's coming on. That's getting on you fast as a defender and really difficult to line up as a block. Well, a couple of service errors here for Baylor. Baylor just has to win this set and they win the match. You take a look at Baylor's numbers. They are hitting 431, and not for the current set, for the entire match. They have maintained such a high level of play throughout. Avery Skinner tooling the block. She's got that high, heavy arm. So much fun to watch her, and she's got the ball control to go along with the offense. So many teams are going to try to serve at her, maybe create some congestion for her, but she can pass the ball so well, and then they can give it right back to her. And we're seeing that connection more and more with Hannah Sedwick. I mean, Ryan McGuire told us we don't have her to her All-American self yet. I think they're getting real close, though. Yeah, I do, too. And we haven't even mentioned the fact that because she's in graduate school classes, her classes will overlap their practice time. They have several players on this squad who are in graduate school classes, and you know how that is. Those are only offered so often over the course of the day. And so right now, school is a prior priority for those graduate students. And Avery Skinner has days where her classes overlap practice. She's there later. And luckily, she's such a mature, knowledgeable player that he said there's things we can talk through with her that she doesn't have to rep out like a freshman would have to do. Yeah, what a luxury. There she goes, tips over the block. Good up by Carter. Kara McGee just hammered it. Good job by Kara McGee just staying ready up here at the net. Put it right back on him. Leah well, Carter just about came over there and got herself a block, though after diving in to pick up the tip, which realize that's a great shot by Avery Skinner because even if it's not effective, you cause Leah Carter to have to come pick that ball up and you're trying to take her out of the offense. Backside to Haley Warner, haven't called her name in a minute. Avery Skinner with the hand set to Presley. Shot is long. Skinner's so well-rounded, that was cool. 
Yeah, we've seen Skinner with handsets over the course of the season, and we've seen Yasiana Presley several times step in and use her hands. And Coach McGuire said, you know, we train all areas of the game, and everyone needs to be able to better the ball. It's something they really have bought into. And Baylor's block will come through. Kara McGee at her best. Look at the movement to her right. She's so good about getting those hands over quickly and taking away that low, hard ball. Aaliyah Carter has carried such a load for K-State tonight. We said, but she gets some help, and they haven't quite found that second offensive weapon. Katie Fernholz has been really good, though, out of the middle with seven kills. So she's right there on the bubble of being that complimentary offensive player. Well, timeout is called here as K-State trails by seven. Well, our week three Monday Night Football matchup, a big early season NFC East showdown. It's the Eagles and the Cowboys, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. And hey, if you're looking for something fun, Monday Night Football with Peyton and Eli over on ESPN2 at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. They'll be breaking down this matchup from their couches, of course and they've always got special guests. There's always something going on. Monday Night Football coverage also available on ESPN and the ESPN app. Well, big time players play on Monday night. Big time hitters play in this match for Baylor. They're hitting 434 for the match, but in the set, 471. That's crazy good numbers. Crazy good numbers as a team. Just seven attacking errors in the match. K-State has had 17 attacking errors, hitting 232. Bears on a 3-0 run. And there's the quarterback who's making all the right choices to get to that number of 434. Really well done. I loved what Coach McGuire said to us about his group. He said, I don't have to make right and wrong choices. I have to make right and right choices. I have so many good players. Yeah. I just have to figure out where to put them. There's an ace for Hannah Sedwick. Her second one. Nice little jump float. You can see that one just kind of dives at the end. K-State, the second night in a row so far. No aces. And another point for Baylor. This is what happens. Baylor can just pull away from you. Mm -hmm. And K-State trying to be creative. Now. K-State trying to be creative there offensively because realize now Yasiana Presley is out there blocking at that right pin as Hannah Sedwick has rotated to the back row. So Leah Carter has done a good job in the rotations when the setter's been in the front row, really taking advantage of that matchup. But we haven't seen huge numbers from Nimhard today. But don't forget, Nimhard at times has had to swing into the block of Yasiana Presley, and that's a pretty challenging task. Nice pass by Skinner. Another use Presley. of Yasiana Presley down the middle. Now they'll use her on the left. Aaliyah Carter off the block. Good job there by Aaliyah Carter. And that time they keep Avery Skinner over at the right pin. So Aaliyah Carter attacks that block. And it'll be interesting to see when Yasiana Presley is in front of her if she avoids that right side blocker. Skinner on the right. Wow, did you see that? Because of the success that they had earlier with Vandermark running right behind the setter, that left hand, she can sort of take it right out of the setter's hands. The blockers are coming over to help, and then the quick delivery to the right pin, and no one home to defend Avery Skinner. There's just too many things to worry about playing Baylor. Mm-hmm. Passing a little bit of a work in progress for K-State, as Coach Fritz told us. We're going to see him make an adjustment here. Almost passing with four right now, trying to give a server a little different look. Oh, unfortunately, that doesn't work out. Six aces now for Baylor. Hey, if you want to know those dates, because I certainly did for when Baylor and Texas play, that is November 5th and 6th. They'll play back-to-back -back matches late in the season. They'll probably be playing their best volleyball at that point. Can't wait to see that Big 12 matchup. Circle those, highlight them, and circle them again. That's going to yep. be a fun one. And 
Oh, I was going to say an opportunity for K-State. But that one doesn't even travel over the net, so make it a point for K-State. Now Leah Carter goes back to serve 18 kills, 40 swings, hitting 275. You can't say enough about what she does for K-State, even with the service error. She carries a big load. She really does, and she's doing it as an underclassman. I'm just super impressed with her. Set a K-State freshman record last year with 4.11 kills per set. 325 total kills. And then she took on the load in the spring of playing six rotations. Yeah. Also tied the record as the fastest Wildcat to 500 kills. Yeah. So she is really making a mark early in this program. Next step is somebody's got to help her. Absolutely. Nimhard down the line, but too long. It's match point, Baylor. Fernholtz gets a touch. It'll be second match point, Baylor. Smart swing by Fernholz. She obviously has to take something off of that one. She's floating off the net, but still swings high and goes off those blockers' hands. Really kept her composure even on a even on a misconnection behind. Still match point for the Bears. Harrison too long. Going for a fast set there in the gap between the middle and the outside. Something a little different for Harrison. And Baylor sweeps K-State twice. Back-to-back -back sweeps for the Bears. And that's not easy to do. We know.